Delon, Daniel, hey, congratulations for Hollow Point. Hey. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Such an action-packed film um, from, from start to beginning. So, you know what, it's, it's quite enjoyable. Oh, thank you thank so much. You. So, uh, Daniel, let's start with you. Where did the original idea came from? Because I know you've done a lot of action films, um, you know, before and lately. Yeah. Um, so the original script came from Chad Law and his brother, Evan. Um, and I had loved that script for a number of years. And then uh, Chad let me do a rewrite on it. And so I kind of I modified it to, to where I wanted it to be to fit sort of structure and what I some of the things that I wanted to say and um and I it was introduced to me um Delon was introduced by Adele Noor one of the producers and we hit it off I mean we actually were looking you know we read about 10 scripts Delon and I decided to make a movie together and we read about 10 different scripts and considered it and ultimately uh, we chose this one because of the you know basically the quality of the script and what it said and I think uh I, I think we made the right choice I do too <laughs> well, excellent, Delon. So, so tell us what initially attracted you to a project like this, because I know you come know. from more of a music background. Yes. Um, so I think it was the people, right? Adele is my co-producer, who's a phenomenal guy, uh, introduced me to Daniel, who's a phenomenal director. I watched a lot of Daniel's movies. And ultimately, as an actor, it always boils down to the script. And I think the script told a very kind of important story uh, a family story that shows you kind of when you're put at your wits end what are you really supposed to do are you supposed to be ethical are you supposed to be unethical is it okay to be unethical these types of questions are really hard to answer in life in general and i think that's what makes you know like a really good movie great is is when people watch what to, what would happen because there are no if would they do it you know what i mean so <laughs> right. uh, so that was very attractive about the film and getting involved with it you know uh, and get involved with daniel and get involved with adele and get involved you know really as an actor i was I, i'm I, I don't know if you know this but i've done multiple films in sri lanka even though i'm born and raised in america so um this was kind of like my first american debut film as an actor so it was also uh, incredibly important as an actor to kind of convey a message that was valuable delon since this is your first american feature what's the difference between you know doing an american movie and a sri lankan movie <laughs> well first the language <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um and secondly um when you do a film in um in a country like Sri Lanka, which is, you know, kind of like a burgeoning country, like an up and coming country, right? It's not necessarily a third world country. It's a developing country. Um, the, uh, the budgets are actually really huge because they know who you are, right? I was the number one artist in my country for many, many years. So they know that it'll work because there's so little people in the country that they'll put $10 million behind a film because they know every single person ubiquitously around the country will watch it. Um, so that's different. And the other main thing that's different is like, everything is kind of third world. Like we'll, they'll be running up lights with sandals on, you know what I mean? <laughs> Your trailer will be hotter than all hell. And for them, it's cool as fuck. <laughs> Uh, you know, like if something goes wrong, you know, they'll send six guys to go fix it and only one guy will end up fixing it. I mean, it's, it's typical, you know what I mean? You're, you, I, are you Asian? I'm guessing you're Asian, right? I am, yes. Yeah. So, and are you Thai? Pot Thai? I am Thai. That's correct. Awesome. Love yeah, Thailand. Yeah. So he goes to Thailand a lot. I've been there too. And like, you Fuck know, up. our, our cultures are very similar, Sri Lanka and Thailand. So you know exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> People <laughs> eating with their hands during lunchtime. I mean, you know, it's just different. It's a different culture. <laughs> That's terrific. Hey, um, Daniel, I, I know you've done so many uh, action films before, and you recruited, you know, Luke, Michael, and Juju. Um, and they, I, I know Luke and Juju for sure have done a lot of um, action films. Michael, Michael have done a, a few of them before. Right. Does it make is it does it make it easier to recruit you know like uh, the, these type of action stars into a film action film like yourself? Does it actually require less training on their part? Yeah, I mean for sure. Listen, um, 
I I do do lots of action movies and 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 actually Delon himself as well as a martial artist. So he was he 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 adapted really well to all the fight choreography. Um, you know, we worked with Arnold Chong and Peter, um, and and basically we put together, you know, choreographed sequences that some of people would like. Like Luke took to it pretty easily, although modified some of it. Juju did a lot of her own choreography on this movie and actually added some action that wasn't an initially in it because she does have so much skills as a martial artist. And Michael Perret um, is a physical guy. You know, he's like kind of put me in coach, put me in coach. So we gave him a couple punches and hits, you know, we added that in. Um, so yeah, it's always beneficial. I love to work with athletic people and, and people who could do the choreography. And then if, if they can't, we support them with, you know, obviously doubles, et cetera, but at a very physical cast and, um, and even Jay Moore, you know, took a couple hits, uh, himself um who's not known for action you know he's the guy from jerry Maguire fired tom cruise um he great guy he plays a gangster in this but so everybody was physical in the movie and it does help obviously if they do have some training which most of these people did delana i did not know you have a martial arts background i, <laughs> I knew you had a music background can you talk about that um yeah i mean i started studying martial arts in third day of grade kung fu sun <laughs> Taekwondo, then Wen Chun, um, then Wushu was the last art I studied. Um, I've always felt like, uh, I think my dad always felt, you know, growing up as first generation, you know, kind of immigrants, it's very easy to get made fun of at school. And he had a, a, had to deal with a lot when he first got here. So he wanted to make sure that if someone, you know, was, was acting a fool, we could whoop their ass. I mean, that's really what it boiled down to. He's a father, right? <laughs> yeah. He's a father and he doesn't want to see his kids get made fun of or, or, or have a problem. And, you know, back in the day, I was a skinny little Sri Lankan kid, you know, and it was a very big world and it was a very foreign world. In my house, we speak Singalese, right? So in our, in our house, it's very foreign. We eat curry all day. And my lunches had curry in them, you know, and then we go into this American world and, you know, it's different now, but when I was a kid, we were really like foreigners and we were treated that way. So martial arts was a huge part of my upbringing to make sure that, you know, I wouldn't have to uh, just take it, you know, so I'm happy. A quick story, but quick little interjection here, if you don't mind. So we were fortunate enough to screen at the Jackie Chan International Film Week. And I met Jackie Chan personally. And um, I did this giant interview and they said, Daniel, one criticism, criticism is how did the, the lead guy learn martial arts so quickly? <laughs> and I, said, I said, you got me there. You got me there. Listen, the bottom line is I didn't want to make a prison movie and spend too much time in prison. I made another martial arts prison movie it's called Lockdown. And the story was really on the outside. But he did check me and it plays into like, how did he get so good at martial arts so quickly? <laughs> so I'll give him that note. That's a fair criticism. Yeah, that, awesome. that is a fair criticism. It's because um, if you're, if we're watching this, uh, Delon, you you convinced me that you didn't know any martial <laughs> arts during those prison scenes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean you, you you had you had to pull back quite a bit on on those scenes, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I think like it, just like any sort of acting, you just have to do the job that you're asked to do, right? Yeah. And I think your ability to duplicate the character is what makes the movie believable. And so you got to get yourself out of the way and just be the character. And I think that's the most important part of like conveying the truth of the film, you know? Daniel, cool. can you talk about uh, choosing the locations to rec um, recreate uh, some of these LA scenes here? Because I, because we noticed you know, the, the railroad yards, um, not sure where you actually film your prison scenes, but, you know, could you talk about the... Two yeah, things? absolutely. Listen, locations are definitely a character in the movie. It's one of the main things. Um, you know, the, the first two things when I when a job is awarded and a go, obviously it's cast is number one, and second is locations for me. Um, I, I go out physically location scouting myself, and in this case, Adele Noor um, actually lives near the, the railroad station in that whole compound. So we scouted around all these different um, places. We went to the, you know the car, the junk places. And, and, you know, I just, I just chose locations that had some visual depth to them, you know, multi-use locations. Cause we did shoot the movie only in 13 days, which a lot of people don't know and whether I should talk about it or not, it's debatable, but you know, we <laughs> shot fast. So I, 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 I 
chose locations that were um, very visual and I could cheat in a lot of different directions. So, you know, a lot of the scenes we did consolidate into a couple main locations in that railroad, um, that railroad station had a warehouse, et cetera. And then we did, um, we rented the interior on the stage of a jail um, prison and, you know, and, and supplemented that with some, um, you know, establishing shots, et cetera. So there's a lot of cheating involved in shooting fast. I'm really, really almost really photogenic in terms of being able to make people believe that they're places that they really aren't. I sometimes I'll shoot one scene in like four different places because of logistics and you think it's one and, and then or, or one location and it's 15 different locations in the movie. And and I, I also credit Carmen Cabana, my director of photography, who's fantastic, um, and everybody that worked hard around it to, to make the locations. But locations are a character in the movie, and it was very um, important to find the right ones logistically and visually. Terrific. Delon, your character, I, I don't I don't know what to make up with him because uh, because he's he's he is struggling throughout the entire film you know, back and forth, especially, you know, not really allowing the cops, you know, to do their jobs or you want, you want revenge. How was it to get into that headspace of that character? And I, I'm, I'm going to go on, out on a limb. You're nothing like your character. <laughs> um, I think to, it's funny you say that. So <laughs> you are like the character. I am very much like the character, actually. <laughs> yeah. I have I have been through some crazy, crazy stuff. And I have been tested and tried on many occasions in some very, very, very difficult situations that have led me to, you know, seek a holier path, you know, maybe a little bit different from my character. Um, but I'll tell you, man, I, I, I have been through some really crazy stuff. So getting into that headspace was very like, it's kind of original because I, I felt like him many times in my life. Um, being an immigrant or first generation American and trying to break uh, as a musician in this industry or as an actor or uh, anything that doesn't have to do with being a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, working at 7-Eleven, which was the old school Indian idea, uh, is always a war. It's always a war. And and being that I've been a musician and also a rapper, it kind of really fits in that frequency of war. And so, and not being able to advance from it after spending so many years doing it, you get really irritated, you know what I mean? And you want to punch something. And I think this character actually helped me to, it's, it's cathartic, right? Because you're playing something and, and you get to play it out a little bit more kind of expanded than you would in your own real life. And it's it, in that way. It was it was gratifying. You know, it was gratifying in the end to do the to do the things that we did. Uh, I don't want to be a spoiler, but you know, it, you've seen the movie, I guess, right? Yes. But I'll just say it was gratifying to have that in the end. You know what I mean? Whereas I think in real life, you know, that would have not worked out that way. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the wonderful thing about having a film is to allow people to feel, you know, like that end. You know, end of cycle. You know, that is that's terrific to hear. And Daniel, with with a lot of action films under your belt, and especially with Hollow Point here, do you leave room for sequels, or do you usually just do it sort of like one and done? Absolutely, I absolutely would love to do a sequel of this movie. Um, I've thought about it, some scenarios, and certainly it's a really eclectic sort of vigilante team that can do it, and it could be interchangeable. Whether you know, if somebody was not available, it wasn't possible that person could have gotten shot on the job or something. So, you know, we could add different casts and absolutely this is a, this is a team. They, they function as a unit once they come together and they can have more adventures for justice together for certain. I'd love to do a sequel. I agree. I agree hundred percent on that. I know D Delon, I, it, I feel like you had a lot of fun acting and producing a film like this. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, look, I'm an actor always first, you know, but I think sometimes, like I said, you know, being like a first generation here, you have to be a little bit more aggressive about the way that you push your um, um, your agenda as, as a human being. And, and it's not always about, you know, just like getting people to see you. It's about showing other people that it's possible that we can be that, right? Yeah. 
And that's, and that's kind of why I still stay in entertainers, like showing other Sri Lankans and Indians and South Asians like yourself, like, hey, look, we can have a superstar there too. We can have an action star. Why not? You know, and that, that's a big part of why I, I stay in entertainment. I think it's very important for the younger generations to see us succeed, you know. And, and actually, absolutely, you know, it's a very diverse cast. And, you know, it typically would be, you know, um, not Delon in this lead role per se. And because Delon, we want to show representations of Asians and people from different countries doing different types of heroic roles, leading roles, and not playing like just a straight gangster or a drug dealer or something negative, you know, given his character goes through an incredible journey. But in a lot of ways, it is morally just like, all his actions I could justify as a father. So it was great, I think, to see him in a diverse role that's not all good, not all bad. It's gray area, like such like as life. life. Yeah. That well, that's, nice. That is terrific. And absolutely, thank you for the Asian representation in the film like this. Of course. I actually um, live in Thailand full time now. So for the last three years, so I, I live in Thailand on the beach. And so I go around the world and make movies. So maybe we'll meet together as well sometime. Okay, that sounds excellent. We we should do that because I'm planning there to go there this summer myself. So fantastic, <laughs> excellent. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for uh, speaking with me about Hollow Point. I can't wait to uh, speak with you guys uh, once again um, on your next projects. Yeah, thank and, you so uh, much. Just so you know, uh, it's available on video on demand April 9th all over the United States. Anywhere you'll be able to find it, uh, sit down and watch it right there in your home April 9th. That's thank right. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye now. All right. Bye.